Hey folks, Valentin Nemed here, and today we'll be looking at the response mechanics in Nuclear Option. I came across it just entirely by accident on Twitter and had a chance to recently try out the playtest, so let's get right into it and see what's there. The main focus response-wise is the aircraft damage, and the main thing within that is the detachables. The store page states that you have anywhere from 30 to 50 detachables per plane or helicopter, and you will very much feel and notice that. Parts coming off right where you are shooting. On missile impacts, you will have a very good variety of possible outcomes. You will see of course like some part coming off and then the plane keeps losing beats as it comes down. And you do very much have the plane obliterations. And I should note that you will have damaged parts often dangling and not directly or immediately coming off. So, as for this feature, it really is as cool as it sounds in this store description. To make the comparison with the character response stuff, the many points of imputation do very much make a difference here. As you can imagine there are more types of possible damage, such as burning and smoking engines, burning and exploding gas tanks, as well as holes in the aircraft. As for the latter, seems like what you have is several pre-made hole variations for each part, depending on the severity of the hit, until it basically comes off. Dynamic damage at the point of impact is always more fun, but in this kind of a game it's really not an issue and, in my opinion, the detachables as they are do very much get the job done. And of course, damage will absolutely affect the plane controls. That is a very very wide spectrum. Anything from you can keep going with minimal impairment, having to eject, and really anything in between. Even in a very messed up plane, you can still try to deliver the final devastation on whatever ground or air vehicles you come across, and the cool thing is, you will very much see AI do it too. As you can imagine, this feature also contributes to a great variety of possible crash sequences. As for the rest, it is very basic. Ground vehicles get replaced with a destroyed model, and in the current state, most buildings seem to come down with no wrecks. And as for the nukes, the effects are very nice, but 
the greater is still on a decal and you will come across some issues with the building damage. But even with that, you do very much have a sense of a messy fight and even that of an aftermath too. So after a vehicle is blown up, you will have the smoke pillar and those last for a very good while. Now direct ground vehicle models seem to be permanent and so do the crater decals. For planes too, the plane bits will vanish but the decal will stay. So, pretty basic stuff, but from a bird's eye view at about 400 to 600 km per hour, it does deliver and the main improvement that really is needed is better building damage. As for the game itself, so on first launch I see the main immunity screen, I see the very unity menus and I go in fully expecting something half-baked and very glad to say it wasn't the case. Now, I'm not playing fight games very often and don't really have much to compare it to, but to me it felt like a very solid experience. The controls feel good, the visuals are more than fine and seriously feels quite good to go. Also, it is not friendly. You can easily play to the mouse and keyboard, get the hang of it quickly and personally I have absolutely enjoyed playing it. So I would say easy to get into, but hard to master if you want to have the proper runs with landing for resupplying and such. This by the way is one of my two so-called successful landing attempts. Didn't explode, didn't break the wheels, no parts came off, so yeah, I think it should count. That is it for today, do let me know what you think in the comment section and subscribe for more content coming really soon. Until next time!